Well, this is very nice when I see things like this hit the channel. And this is a thrill seeker here who has close to a million subscribers, I think. And I saw this land on the weekend. And he says, hey, DG, uh, hey, DG just want to say that this sort of reaction is actually invaluable. And by that, he's speaking of um, one of his videos we watched. Any comments on our uh, reactions, which are more than reactions. It's basically my opinions and uh, talking about subjects. And he says... Um, Looking back at these videos from an entirely different perspective is super interesting, uh, especially when it comes to how things I say are perceived. Also, your chat is awesome. All the members of the community, the algorithm, as I call them, uh, they're part of the experience, too. They are. They always are. It's important to me. Uh, not going to lie, hearing me talk so positively about the Beyond, which is a new headset, which was fascinating. If you missed that, you should check it out on our channel. Um, he says, hearing me talk so positively about the Beyond feels a little cringe and shilly, but it's a pretty wild experience going from using half to almost a, a one pound VR headset uh, for the past four years to having something that is crazy light and made for your face. Um, he's not getting any kickback or cash because in that we were we were speaking. I know his integrities. I know he's got integrity. By the way, Thrill Seeker. I know you got integrity. Some people in the audience they don't they don't aren't familiar with Thrill Seeker. Was saying you know maybe he's he's getting some type of money for this uh, headset because he's speaking so favor uh, favorably and positive about it. And and I was like, nah, I know I've been watching long enough to know this dude. He might have got a free headset from it. Uh, but I think that's about as far as it goes. Uh, and he's very honest. He's a, he's great. Kind of got a good journalistic kind of like sense of things and goes at it and researches everything he gets into uh, in dealing with VR and tech with VR, hardware, um, titles, gaming. Great, great channel. Love the channel. Uh, so really cool that he commented as such. Um he also wanted to conclude, I did really try to present all the negatives first to set the stage first before I started getting all giddy about it. But like I said, these videos are actually invaluable, meaning us. And um, I really appreciate your own enthusiasm for VR tech. I learn a lot from these. But yeah, thanks again, DG. Until next time. Now, the cool thing about this is he actually then, um, I don't know if it was on stream or or in in you know talking with his viewers basically told them to go over to this video and view bomb it and we got 200 subscribers 200 subscribers right off the bat just because he was like hey check this video out yes, stop. You're not gonna hate me. Yes. so that was a nice little weekend kind of surprise for me and i was like wow this is really cool and it made me feel like the old school youtube was back like i remember when i first started youtube and i was like man you know what i really miss about youtube the people like it felt like a community it felt very um um socially binding in a good way not in a bad way and it was it was really healthy and then you know corporate you know blah 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 corpo moves but like this this made me think back to those days and i was like man here's a dude who's got almost a million subscribers and he, right organic right chrono it's like an organic vibe happening right and i was like wow this is the youtube i remember so thank you thrill seeker for making me feel that way it was like a, a, a light and a very dark room had gone on and it was like, wow, thanks. It's nice to know that this still exists on YouTube. So thank you very much, Thrill, for doing that. I appreciate you, bro. And uh, today we're going to see, can VR get too real? Uh, this, uh, the disturbing ethics of extreme realism. So this is why I like his content. He always adds something different to his content. Let's check it out. It's Friday. It's Friday today. Hello and welcome to Tuesday News Day, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. I got a very compelling question for you guys. What happens when VR games and simulations become too real, or at least so real that it's nearly indistinguishable from reality? Well, we're about to face that very question sooner than you think, and it's some really weird territory for humanity in general, and we're going to talk all about that. But in general, this is just an interesting week of VR news. We got a lot of good, from a brand new quest update bringing some pretty 
huge things that I've been waiting for. Finally, we have a smidgen of info on Valve's next headset, some really good extra news for quest owners, but of course, yin yang, double edged swords, we got some very concerning things going on behind the scenes at Meta that we have to talk about. It's well, of course. kind of serious. Of course, so, we do. <laughs> buckle up, we got a lot. When don't we ever have things to worry about with Meta? And Meta stock on a rampage right now. Their earnings were actually not that bad. Like I was, I was, it was pretty interesting. Although they've cut everybody that they can possibly cut, uh, you know, and like it's always funny to me that that, that Wall Street uh, bids up a stock when the company starts to cut so many people. I mean, I get it, you're cutting the expenses, uh, but man, if it's so easily you can just bring these people in and then just shuttle them back out. I mean, it's not really, it's not really doing any good to the brand in terms of the employees. Uh, and what they're going to say about their experience as Meta being their employer or uh, Zuck, you know. Lots to cover and let's here. just get right into the news. <laughs> so let's just start off with Valve and the Deckard. If there's one thing over the past few years that has persisted in VR, it's the interest in Deckard. It being the supposed code name of Valve's next no, VR no, headset. VR, the follow VR up to the index really turned really into good. pretty much I, the de facto standard of PC VR. I, th I think VR is like having this this moment where there's going to be an explosion. I, th I think I think going into the next five years with VR, it's gonna it's gonna get more competitive. Prices will come down, um, and it's going to be a luxury item, you know, especially as things get worse out there. People aren't going to have the money to do these types of things, but um, I think there's a really good road ahead for it. I think a lot of things are going to go VR, AR. We talked about MR <laughs> last week. That was a good show. I think that highlight comes out. I think it came out this morning. Actually, if you're interested in that, check that out. That, that's out this morning centric devices and beyond a little crumb right. here or there Absolutely in the form of noob. a leaked patent or Absolutely. some data mine scraps honestly there hasn't been much to go off it's VR's, been four VR's years take over since the index has launched and there's been a affordable. growing number of people that are convinced kind of valve has just given up on vr think, however uh, barrister brings up a good good thing i i see this a lot Right, I see. I see this a lot. Ferrister says I get bad motion sickness with VR. Check out the video that I put mm, that I just put out this morning, Ferrister. I think it features the Beyond, which is a new uh, VR headset that is phenomenal, and it supposedly helps with people who have motion sickness. That couldn't be further from the truth. Recently, in a translated interview with a Korean gaming publication, Greg Coomer, product designer at Valve, said this, quote, I can definitely say that we are continuing to develop VR headsets recently. Valve has a lot of expertise in VR devices <laughs> and you. has faith in the medium and VR games, end quote. And if you've been tightly following Deckard, this probably won't Good be morning, too much figures. of a surprise. Things kind of leak all the time, thanks to Brad. But like I said, when four years rolls by without pretty much anything official, well, pessimism definitely starts to mount. And while we don't have any real concrete details and it might be a while before we ever do, Index 2 or whatever it's going to be called is in development, at least at this point in time. And whether we're talking about a reveal this year or in 20, I have no clue. Pretty but the point me. is they have not left the VR segment and I don't think that they're going to anytime soon. But now onto this newest quest update, V53, just uh, skipping right over 52. So this is in the public testing channel right now. It's not quite live for everyone, but you can nab it right now if you want to, but it might be worth it because it comes with a few pretty huge things. The biggest one I'm excited for is the ability to lay down and have a system-wide horizon adjust. Sort of similar to VRChat's horizon adjustment, but not quite as robust, but it is, however, system-wide. Basically, with this feature, you can be laying down completely horizontally, turn on the feature, and the headset will function as if you were wearing it while standing up. And it makes me think, maybe the good old half-dive sleeping VR headset that was canned a while back was onto something pretty special. Special. But yeah, just a great feature in general that I think is going to help a lot of people out. Also, there are some updates for the user interface, <laughs> particularly like it, for the direct touch UI. Nothing super massive. Meta Was has there... been flip flopping on okay, UI. I understand what they were doing here, I think. But like to me, I'm going to tell you what this made me think. That in real life, somebody's invented some type of iron mask. <laughs> headset that you literally enclose on your head so this is the first thing that i see right here i start to think my mind but it just goes crazy and so i'm asking uh our vr specialists in chat now if there is a thing i could wrap around my head completely and just wear that on stream so that i am 
um, like an iron mask, if you will. Is there a VR iron mask that I can put my head inside of, lock, and then stream for everybody's entertainment? I don't think my my head. You're right, Chrono. Chrono. <laughs> you're right, Chrono. God damn it, Chrono. You're right. Also, there are some updates for the user interface, particularly for the direct touch UI. Big. Nothing super massive. Meta has been flip-flopping on UI stage. choices for a long time now, and this just kind of seems like more of that. But in addition <laughs> to all of that, there's actually something pretty huge for Quest Pro users. Last update, we got local dimming for PC VR, vastly increasing <laughs> the contrast ratio of the displays and just making yeah, it look better in like headset an overall. Mask. And with just this update, with it. the simple ADB command, we've got full system-wide PC VR <laughs> or standalone mode local dimming. Which which if you own one, is just a huge benefit. It's awesome. But now we can move on from updates and Valve hypotheticals. Let's go back to the question I asked earlier. This is something <laughs> that I've been thinking about for a long time now. And with this gameplay footage recently taking the internet- Yeah, look at this. And we're gonna talk about this today because we reported this like five months ago and got like 2000 views on this thing. I saw Jack, Jack Frags do this. It's like 4 million views five, six months later. I'm like, really? You guys are just now catching up to the things we watched five to six months ago? This is the power of the natural organic algorithm that is DG360. Yes, sir. You're not going to hate me. Yes. I saw this in October. We saw this in October, people, because of you. And now everybody's seeing it. Now everybody's seeing it. I am jelly, Storm. God damn it. I think it's now time we to talk about something that I views. really don't. Every view we get is a win for you. Do you understand algorithm? That's going to help us grow and give you an awesome place to be with awesome people and more awesome content. Every single view counts. Remember, remember, this is this is this is where we're going in 2023. We're gonna own it up. Just we're gonna own it up. Just feel the win. Just feel all the win see getting talked about enough the <laughs> idea what happens what when Christy games says, get James. so realistic that you can't tell the difference we're gonna be underground for like probably and and you're right dude because recently exactly that happened this is gameplay footage from I an want upcoming the face pc mask. game I want the iron face mask it's an unreal we'll engine 5 title that is meant to be a hyper realistic sim where you're viewing the game from the perspective of a body cam and when this hit twitter it was extremely controversial some people legitimately couldn't believe that this was gameplay and not gonna lie when i I first saw it, I thought it was some live leak footage, not a game, but it's definitely a game. This is all rendered. We actually have the download link in the description of the video if you wanted to try it out. Dirt. But that's not the only controversy. <laughs> in October, a we Blizzard did that. employee chimed in saying that this views. is too real, and a lot of people views. agreed. A lot of opinions were With expressed that shooting someone in a game that is this realistic looking is maybe even morally wrong, and we should look at that. Which I find all of this discourse interesting, but I have a a way bigger question on my mind as someone that spends my time in the world of VR. Looking at a game like this on a screen or monitor is one thing, but it's a whole different conversation when you take this idea of hyperrealism on a monitor with yeah. a mouse and keyboard and start talking about being in these simulations in virtual reality. Sure, something like this can look realistic and it's proven that even upon close inspection, a lot of people can't tell if this is a game or real footage. But to me, as a VR person, that's kind of like being excited about being able to fake a photograph with CG. Like, this isn't a real photograph. It's a 3D model. But without context, yeah, of course it can trick people into thinking it's a picture taken. Here's where, here's where I think, th this is my angle in all of this. One day it's going to be so real. And uh, Can we not pause on this, Pepe, please? Taking with the camera. Uh, yeah, that's so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Pepe. Much better pause. Here's where I'm going to go with this. My angle is this. Eventually, it's going to get so good that you won't be able to distinguish the reality from your experience, right? And that's when it really gets scary because how many times will it replicate itself to the point where you don't know exactly where you're at? Like, that's, that's I think, where I'm going. At. It, it, like, in a sci-fi novel, that's how I'd take it. i take it as, like... Once this gets to the point where the realism is undiscernible from the real, right, then how do you know how many different ways from Sunday you're plugged in and which reality that you're actually in? I think that's what really scares me at the very end, like this dystopian future where you're having a multiverse moment and you don't know exactly what the real is. You know, that's, that's where I'm going with it. I'm from the future, though, and let me tell you, it's scary.
camera. And this whole idea of extremely realistic 3D environments and the morals and Pepe. ethics that right. go along with it is something that I know will probably be I'm one of the not. toughest moral hurdles that virtual reality will ever go through. And this showed me that we're not that far from that conversation. In fact, already right now, the original demo of the blank <laughs> scene from Pepe that very room. game that sparked this conversation is playable within VR. Of course, using the unreleased Unreal Engine. I, I don't necessarily want to even talk about the ethics of this, you know, like when, I, when I'm when I'm speaking about this, I'm talking about this ethically, I'm not quite sure because, you know, it can be used in any which way by the person that basically is dictating the 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 power or the technology if if it's adopted and i mean that's what what comes down to ethically that could that could be like a scary way to live where you're like you're forced into a, a vr experience for somebody doing something perhaps in a web3 world uh you know earning them crypto so that they can live a good life and get royalties from your work you know like that would be that would be ethically bad but see i'm thinking like you know way into the future and so i can't really have a conversation with people in the present because they don't understand it because people in the present they get too politically involved they want to make it a left right issue you know it's a populist kind of thing uh, which is usually the 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 beginning marks of the downfall of a civilization is when you start to see populism but i won't get into that discussion that's too that's too philosophical right now i'm, I'm talking about gaming i'm talking about vr what, what pepe okay play it VR injector mod. Yeah, it's lacking all of the realism flair and tricks, but my point is that if this is possible on a flat screen now, we're not that far from VR being so realistic that it can actually trick spectators into believing the captured footage is real. And to the experiencer, it can lead to extreme hyper immersion. Like I said, it's one thing to be clicking heads with a mouse. It's a totally different thing to be holding a gun in a Getting virtual a reality job. simulation that feels and looks real, oh. and then to move your body and look at another player or character and while pull getting the trigger. a blow using cutting edge hardware and photogrammetry environments in unreal engine i've actually already felt some of this hyper realism and there's a few really impressive demos out there for vr as is which leads me to the question about all of this how real is too real is there a limit where things just get Depends. too real within virtual reality and On certain things jobs. that you can do within it should be taboo or is it all just polygons and we should detach ourselves <laughs> from the virtual because it is not physically real and does being in a simulation carrying out certain actions that you'd never do in reality have any effect on people or their psyche or is this all just a silly conversation similar to the problems mortal Kombat had in the 90s and that was that. Now that, that's a great analogy right there. I love it. <laughs> it's great. It's a great still right there. <laughs> I don't really no i don't have the clear answer this is a place that we're exploring right now and believe me it's a place that's going to be explored in the future but right now <laughs> when millions of people are talking about a hyper realistic flat game what i do know is that this is all going to be massively amplified before we know it because of vr it's a different more immersive medium that has a lot of crossover with gaming in general i mean shoot this game itself is look, probably look going to be accessible within looks, vr though. for it example kind of and insane. these visual tricks to increase graphical fidelity are only going to get better. Yeah. So I think it's really I worth talking about this as we all ago. pursue this hyper immersion thing. What do you think about this? What well, happens when hope... we reach a point like this in VR where everybody has access to hyper realistic simulations? But let's clear the air a little bit. I think it's time for a meme. All right, there we go. So Pico has had a tough time trying to launch the Pico 4 headset globally. It turns out they're having a way harder time in some areas than others. Chile, as a country, recently blocked Pico's request to register their trademark in the country because the company's name apparently has an inappropriate, <laughs> vulgar meaning in Chile. <laughs> and uh, I always knew Pico was evil. I always knew Pico was evil. I've been telling people for ages that Pico is evil. Evil. You know, we, we know Pico in Star Citizen as an evil alien penguin. Just look it up. Type in Star Citizen Pico and you'll see they're evil alien Penguins, people. Evil alien penguins. Set to destroy humanity. <laughs> and they're also headsets. And here, Pico is vulgar and offensive. <laughs> Told you. Pico is evil everywhere you go. Pico is evil everywhere you go. 
the Pico is slaying yes, for Kodo. certain male body parts. And such, the authorities absolutely have blocked either. the trademark. Absolutely. And, oh, Pico's in Meme Break twice? Whoa. Oh, it's because they just launched Coop a three too. degree of freedom VR headset Picos in uh, are evil. 2023. Every <sighs> version oh, well, of Pico <laughs> and back evil. to the news. Behind the scenes at Meta in the same week, we have both incredibly good news, but also some really <laughs> right. bad stuff going on. So I'll start with the good. You may remember people, including me, talking about how incredibly bad the retention has been on the Quest 2. How even though 20 million no, units have been sold, stream, it you feels it. like the majority I of them have it. just sat on shelves collecting dust after the initial excitement of VR wore off. <laughs> Meta even saying this themselves. The claims were not entirely <laughs> baseless. And well, according to a Wall Street Journal article citing very credible internal documents from Meta, not only has some Quest software been incredibly lucrative, Beat Saber alone making over What's 255 up, million dollars off of revenue AI, over its AI, lifetime, AI. but the claims of Quest being a dead platform are just flat out wrong. According to these documents, Meta has reported that out of the 20 million Quests sold, the Quest 2 sees up to 6.5 million monthly active users. It still means that two thirds of all Quests are sitting on shelves. It's not the best and there's a lot of room for improvement, but on the more positive side of that coin, 6.5 million active users is a lot more than a lot of people were expecting. Yep, and it's by yep, far the most yep. users of anything VR related. It's, this is why I'm saying this space is going to blow up metas metas Meta's doing meta things right now. And, you know, they're very centralized and they're very evil, but they've got a lot of experience and they really just want your data. I mean, at the end of the day, they had to find new devices to recapture your data again. The ones Apple threw the switch and it became an Apple meta war, right? That's kind of what's happening in the corpo world. So meta had to figure out a way to get all that revenue back <laughs> and all your information and continue that stranglehold on that information because that information, you essentially, you are valuable to them and they never ever want to lose it. It's their only source of revenue and they will always hang on to it. I mean you. Cuckerberg. And uh, this also means something even bigger if you're a PC VR fan, especially if you're tired of people saying that PC VR is dead. If you crunch the numbers of Steam VR active users, Quest 2 market share, and Quest active users, almost 20% of the entire Quest user base are using their headsets for PC VR. That's held on to a that stock. huge chunk and also way more than I think anybody expected. And goes to show where a lot of people end up actually using their headset after the VR honeymoon phase. Even if PC VR has a prohibitively expensive barrier to entry, I just found this idea to be pretty interesting. Now let's talk about the bad news. Well, okay. remember when Meta stated they were going to be laying off around 10,000 yeah, people this... last year in November? Yeah. Well, of course that more. happened. They Recently, However, I they believe. announced that they were going to be laying off another 10,000 people. Listen, listen, this is the time that we're in, people, man. I mean, bunker down a little bit. Just bunker down just a bit. We are going to be going through some craziness. Everything going on in the world with the bricks, bringing out their own money. I mean, the dollar is going to take a long time to be dethroned, but it's happening in slow motion. And I'm telling you guys. This, this is the land of layoffs right now. The tech industry is laying off so many people and you've, you've got a lot of newly unemployed, very disgruntled people out there and by, by the tens of thousands, hundreds even. And so this is just the world we're getting into right now, man in an effort to be as efficient and lean as possible as a company. And well, that second round is happening right now, and unfortunately, the it's VR side of Meta has been bit. pretty harshly affected by these layoffs. And to be honest, you are a beast. there's been a lot of pain <laughs> and outcry across the VR industry for this. Ready at Dawn's senior engine programmer announced that a third of the company oh, really? has been really laid off, leading to a longtime VR developer from that studio vowing to never work in the VR industry again. One of Meta's other studios, Downport Interactive, behind onward are also feeling these company-wide layoffs. The producer stating that this purge was quote unquote, oh, cool, cool, the cool. toughest day of his career. And I feel a little mixed on this topic. For years now, I've been harshly criticizing Meta on their weird strategy of just buying up every successful VR studio that they can. And I've had good reason to do so. Almost every studio- they, they just want to absorb it all. They want to absorb all of it. They want to own all of it. They want 100% of everything, which is also 100%. That is what they're striving for. 
they want to they they don't want saturation they want to have a monopoly on it they want to have a stranglehold monopoly on this studio that meta has bought hasn't released anything since their acquisition over why is that they're blanking out the space you know what they're doing you know what they're doing they're buying it up so nobody can compete with them hello hello people buying out all the competition they can they're buying the space they are literally buying vr they're buying the experience they're gonna buy it he's writing a check he's writing a check he's continuing to put those checks out he's buying it all that's what we're seeing and then you wonder why things aren't coming out because he doesn't want anything out right now he just doesn't want any competition he wants a blackout four years of acquisition of nine VR studios, we've gotten one game, that being Lone Echo 2 for PC VR. But and that's all you're going to get right now. And that's why he's doing it. He's going to piecemeal it out. He's going to drip. He's going to drip. He's going to drip. And then it's going to be a little bit of a squirt. And then you're going to be like, wow, things got really exciting here. I'm sorry. That's, that's a little too dirty. Is that too, it's too early in the morning for that Pepe? Okay. Sorry. But that was already in development before the acquisition. To put it simply, just looking at the track record, when Meta acquires something, the studio will just stagnate. And then they crush the games that are doing well. And I can't help but wonder bad, where we'd be right now if these studios right now, had stayed all over. independent because <laughs> Sorry, what backspace. really happened was VR's best talent and strongest IPs were bought, inflated, then put on hold for a few years, and now they're cold, forced to part with longtime VR developers. And the mix part Part of it comes in because, well, maybe this is good news. Not only are these longtime VR developers that were just let go, free agents now completely open to make whatever they want, having more experience in VR than almost anybody in the world, but on Meta's side, I truly hope that this means we'll actually get decent content from Meta-owned studios. They might come back to kick them in the ass though. You're gonna get one of these guys that are gonna develop their own titles, but guess what? Then, 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 then Cuckerberg's coming back and he's going to have the blank check ready to go and he's going to buy them up too. That's how it works. That's how it works. Now, some people are going to have the integrity, the, that integrity, and they won't sell to Cuckerberg, right? And hopefully they're successful and hopefully there's competition, you know, because I mean, I still believe in capitalism somewhat, <laughs> but end, it ends up happening that, that these companies just continually become monolithic. And they become monopolies, uh, but nobody says you're a monopoly. And they continue to exist as the monopoly. And that's just the way it goes, unfortunately. So, I mean, like, all these devs might come back to kick him in the ass. But but Mark's okay with that because he's willing, he's willing to pay a premium. If one of these devs kick back and they make something interesting, he'll just say, hey, how much? And there's a number, and they'll sell. Unless, God bless them, you got those indie devs that have the heart, the integrity, and they're doing something special. Those are the competitors, right? And then watch out because he's, they got stiff competition, man. They got meta and they got meta and, and the checkbook of meta and Mark ready to, to, to continue to buy everything around you. It's, it's a scary world, man. Goes. How it's been obviously isn't working, and sometimes I guess less is more, which in this case that's seems awesome. that's kind of awesome true stuff. because when these companies had less, they actually did more. And I guess we'll see. I know yeah. Meta has a bunch of stuff They're up their sleeves content wise, and I'm excited for it. I really hope that good things come out of all of this. I just really hope they don't fumble as hard as they have been because it's been kind of painful to watch and cover every step of the way. And also, I think from this entire community, we really wish the best for all of the developers that recently got laid off. And I hope that you keep your talent within the industry. But oh, I actually have one more thing. This <laughs> Most of them are like, we don't have anywhere else to go other than within this industry, Thrill Seeker. <laughs> you know, Jesus, I do feel bad for those people. You know, I really do. All humor aside, those are people that are going to have to just figure out where they need to land. And it's not, it's not a hiring market out there right now. There's not a lot of people hiring out there. This week is actually the fourth year anniversary of this channel, and cool. it's kind of wild. Time really flies, and it's been such an honor to be able to talk about VR and cover its ups and downs and also experience them firsthand, but none of this would have ever been possible without all of you. So I want to say more than anything, thank you so much, Thrill Seekers, for being here and clicking. You know, and thank you also, Thrill Seekers, for coming over to DG360. Uh, we got a nice little Thrill Seeker community over here now. It's it's kind of cool to see the channel evolve and all the different communities partaking. It's It reminds me of that old school YouTube, uh, and it's nice that you're part of that algorithm. Uh, and and it, it's great. We found you because of the people in this community that said, hey, DG, check this out. And then 
we just started to watch it on the regular. So very cool thrill seeker. Thank you for your help, buddy. Really appreciate you and what you did. You really boosted up this channel. You helped everybody in this community tie out and we thank you and we are eternally grateful uh, for you being just a genuine, awesome, nice guy who actually has some journalistic integrity. It's, it's a rare thing out there. It really is.